Pastor Rick, welcome back to another episode of Living by the Book in Grace Thank Bible you. Church and anybody else listening. Hi. We're glad you're here. Uh, this episode is brought to you by LaCroix Key Lime Flavor, which, as Pastor Rick said earlier to me, uh, key lime, that's way more fun than a pastor should be having in the middle of the week. That's right. I agree. It's, it's been delightful. <laughs> that's right. Just the regular, bland, foundational diet. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure your wife appreciates that no. comment. <laughs> no. Um, so today, my question for you is: you know, I, I have two little boys, and I'm always in need of parenting help. And so sometimes I just like Those to hijack these great kids. I mean, well, you know, it depends on your definition of great. I mean, I, you know, in some ways, sure. Not great, always great reprobates. Yeah, yeah, they're they're super good. <laughs> Someday they're going to watch. They're going to watch this, and they like, are great. Boys. I love you, boys. I do yes. dearly. Um, no, you know, sometimes I like to hijack these episodes and just ask ask for help. Uh, but I, I think the question today is is something that all parents sure can use help with. So you've you've said this many times to me and, and to other people. Uh, rebellion is never against rules, it's against relationship. The idea being it's 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 so important that you have a strong relationship with your children. Right. So my question for you is how do you develop a good relationship with your kids? And I think it'd be helpful if you kind of answer it. You know, I think that looks different depending on their age. For sure. So, so you know, how do you do that when they're younger, you know, elementary school? Uh, but especially how do you do it when they're teens? Because I think that's that's when it that's when it often becomes the most challenging. And I, you know, I see that as a youth pastor, oftentimes, uh, those, those children are becoming adults. They're, right. they're beginning that process of separating themselves from their parents, yet they're still under their parents' authority. And that just creates a natural friction. So, uh, you know, you, you, you have, you have five children. Uh, they all made it out of teenagehood alive and they all seem to like you. So help us, help us as younger parents. Yeah, I think it's there's so much in this yeah, that a yeah. book could be written. Well, you only get <laughs> 13 minutes. So. A book could, be, book could be written. <laughs> and it uh, actually, I think, is uh, being written. Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I think uh, just, you know, really generally speaking, I think one of the major flaws of parents is they obsess over their kids liking them. Um, and that's a mistake. I think we all have friends that just went too far in trying to get us to like them, hmm. and it was hard to like them. Yeah, yeah, it gets when they annoying. Were it, yeah, right. Yeah, and when a parent does that with their children, they just want their children to like them. Yeah, that the children may like it, you know, when they're getting their way right. and when they're being because it has its advantages. Yeah, right, to the child. It, but yeah. ultimately, the child gets tired of that hmm. kind of thing. And it results in a lack of respect. Hmm. So more importantly than whether your child like you is you loving them. Right. That's the big issue. Right. When when our kids were little and my wife was to ask me, how how are we going to see them turn out? What are we going to yeah. do? How? And, and they were she was she was oppressed by the potential of their rebellion. I said, sure. don't worry about that. Yeah. She was. How can you say don't worry about that? Yeah. I said, there's, there are two things that we're going to do. Yeah. One is we're going to love them. The second thing is we're going to discipline them mm. consistently. Right. So to alliterate, compassion and consistency mm. are the two things that you yeah. need to include. Right. include. Right. I said, if we do those, if we truly love them mm -hmm. and they know it mm -hmm. and we're consistent, then they're going to turn out fine. Mm -hmm. She goes, well, I hope so. I said, just... Let's go, let's go, jump in the car, and I'll drive. Yeah. And so let's just see this thing work out. Right. And so she trusted me, and, and we conducted ourselves in mm -hmm. such a way as we didn't obsess whether our kids liked us. We assumed they would. Right. Because we love them. Right. And the initiating love of someone results in a person responding mm -hmm. with love. Yeah. Just like God and us. Right. We love right. because he first loved us. Right. And God demonstrated his love toward us, and then we were yet, well, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. And that love of Christ constrains us, yeah. right? So yeah. those same principles we're going to apply to our children, and we're going to love our children, yeah. and we're going to find different ways to love our children. We're going to love them with the time that we spend to them, with mm -hmm. the words that we use for them, mm -hmm. the physical attention that we give to them, mm -hmm. the gifts we give to them, all of these things. Yeah. Um, we're, going to, we're going to love them, and they're going to know we love them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that, that there are there are four general phases in sure. in this that yeah. have to be honored. Yeah. Uh, and if you fail to honor the phases, you're going to err. Mm -hmm. The first phase 
because they have to be alliterated again, is I would that, expect nothing less. Yes, yeah. that is the the phase of being a commander. Uh -huh. As a parent, you're a commander. Yeah. yeah, that's just who you are. Right. You do this. If they say no, they're disciplined for it. Yeah. You know, there's no negotiation. Right. There's no uh, argument. There's right. no delay possible. There's, right. You're. I'm a command. I commanded you to do this, and you will do it. And yeah. so let's say that's. You know, somewhere around zero to four or five. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. where you are. From five, six, seven, somewhere in there. And these aren't, right. you know, absolute right. ages. Right. These are right. ballparks. Right. Then you move from, you know, let's say six years old until, let's say, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. You're in the role of a coach. Okay. So you're there with them. You're watching them what they're doing. You say no, 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 no. You need to do it this way. And but you're letting them actually do, make mm -hmm. decisions, mm -hmm. do things. Mm -hmm. um, you're giving them a little, a little bit of autonomy, bit of just autonomy, yeah. and you're letting them function yeah. with you there as a safety net under them right. Right. to stop them if they're going to do something that's inappropriate right. or dangerous, right. you know, to them. You're going to intervene. Yeah. So that's a coach. Yeah. So it's different than a commander. Yeah. You're a coach. Now, a coach still draws out the plays, calls the plays. Right. You right. know, the coach still is in charge. charge yeah. Right. You know, so you're not right. ceding authority. Right. You're still absolutely in authority. Right. You can pull somebody out of the right. game, send them on the bench. Right. Uh, you can, hey, uh, give me 25 push-ups or yeah. whatever. A coach <laughs> can do whatever. Right. You know, but the idea is he's training them yeah. to play the game themselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you're... Giving them a level of autonomy, a level level of responsibility mm -hmm. that's greater okay. than when you are a commander. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you move, and, and you, you should not move to a coach prematurely, mm -hmm. nor should you uh, delay yeah. moving to a coach yeah. too late. Yeah. So there needs to be wisdom, prayer yeah. as to how to make that transition. Right. And a lot of it is going to play off of your child and the responsiveness and where right. they got the idea that you're the commander. Right. And once that's there, then you yeah. can, then you can start to transition. Yeah, you can transition. Yeah. And then around the age of 12, and I, I choose the age of 12 based on historical context, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah, make, becoming sons of the law, mm -hmm. daughters of the law, right. a responsible member right. of society. Right. At the age of 12, 13 years old, when a person is capable of, of biologically, not yeah. emotionally, mentally, right. but biologically right. fathering a child right. or having a child. Right. So for the woman, it's commensurate to uh, the, the, the cycle beginning and so mm -hmm. on. And with a man, it's commensurate to the seed developing. Mm -hmm. um, and around there, you need to transition from being a coach to a counselor. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're counseling them, you're helping them learn how to think, you're, right. you know, you're, you're engaged in all those kind of things. And then you transition from that, you know, let's say, um, 17, 18, 19 years mm -hmm. old, somewhere in there to being a consultant. Mm -hmm. So a counselor, you give them counsel, right. whether they ask for it or not, right. you just are counseling. Them. Right. Uh, a consultant, you wait yeah. to be appealed to. to. to, to so ask. I'm in the stage yeah. of a consultant right. with my children now right. who are married. Right. I don't insert myself into their homes or right. their marriages. Right. I don't. I, I I don't. Right. But if they call me and they frequently do right. and they ask me for advice or opinions right. or what should I do here or there, then I'm very willing. Mm -hmm. to respond and answer questions right. and so on as a consultant. Right. It's, by the way, it's an unpaid consultant. Yeah. I unless know, you consider much. grandchildren <laughs> compensation. <laughs> so right? as long as they keep so, breaking out grandchildren, yeah, you'll yeah. alter yourself as long as they want. Yeah, exactly. Like and, you know, the idea in each of these, um, in, in the commander stage, that Proverbs 22 passage where it says, foolishness is bound in the heart of the child, but yeah. the rod of correction will drive it far from them. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That's the commander stage yeah. in the... Um, the coaching stage, the idea is in that Proverbs 22, train up a child in the way you should go. Mm -hmm. And when he's older right. and not depart part from it, is the idea not that there's a guarantee of any kind, but mm -hmm. basically if you parent your child on the basis of the individuality of that child, mm -hmm. is my understanding of training up the child the way you should go. Mm -hmm. It's when, when you're pointing them toward Christ and righteousness and Considering their individuality mm -hmm. so that child one is different than child two, different right. than child three. Right. Um, 
three, you know, the third child. No, no, three, I, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, but anyway, the. I'm just going to cut this out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> I have all, I have total control over these right. lights. So, uh, <laughs> but they're different. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's different it's people. Very possible that for your boys, you know, George, mm -hmm. well, George is different than Weston. And no, they are different. The, <laughs> for you to assembly line right. with, a, with a die, right. trying to stamp them both out the same right. with the same die, the same right. everything, right. you're going to frustrate your children. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, in the way they should go, has the idea of their individuality, mm -hmm. and so you 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 deal with them according to their individuality. Mm -hmm. Then when they're old, right, yeah. you have trained them. Right. According to their individual bent or in right. that individuality, and right. that's what sticks with them. Right. right, right, is the idea. Right, and then when you get into the the role of a uh, of a counselor, it's that Ephesians uh, six passage where it says, you know, fathers don't provoke or exasperate your children, but mm -hmm. bring them up in the nurture and admonition right. of the Lord. Right. Right. That's both the reinforcement of what needs to be reinforced and the confrontation yeah. of that which needs to be confronted. Yeah. And so that's the counselor, the nuthetic mm -hmm. approach to help a child mm -hmm. be raised up in right. a nurture and admonition, positive and negative yeah. elements yeah. of instruction. Right, And then um, uh, the consultant is uh, something that we find in that uh, Third John 1.4 where John says, I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in the faith. Mm -hmm. And so the ability to watch them and support them mm -hmm. as, you know, as a consultant yeah. to life. Yeah. Yeah. And if you delay in the transition of any of those things, you are going to exasperate yeah. your children. Yeah. So if you treat a 15 year old like you would treat a two year old, you're likely going to exasperate the 15 year old. For sure. Yeah. You haven't made those transitions. Right. right? You're just right. still a commander. Right. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can't treat a two-year-old as a consultant. Yeah, that would That's not That's disastrous. Well. Yeah. Right? That would not you can't. Well. So as your child grows, you need to grow as a parent. Right. Transitioning from being a commander to a coach to a counselor to a consultant. Mm -hmm. And that's what creates ease. And yeah. as you love them in the midst of all that. Right. And as you're consistent in the midst of all that. They will love you. Yeah, they'll love you. Yeah, they appreciate you. Yeah, and um, you know that's this does not suggest, and I I want to be perfectly clear. Uh, my children all struggled with my authority, with my sure. rules, with sure. my making decisions whenever I had to make decisions, and they struggled when I would not make decisions mm -hmm. for them. They begged me at times. Yeah, Dad, just tell me what I need yeah. to do. What's going to be the best, wisest thing yeah. to do here? And this is this in that. Counselor, in the counselor phase, yeah, yeah. In the counselor okay. phase, right, right, uh, yeah, and where you just felt like you they needed to you need to make decide. Their decisions. Yeah. You need to decide what, yeah. what you're going to do there. Mm -hmm. No, just tell me. I, I don't right. want to mess up. I don't want to go right. with the headache of all the. Just tell me what right. I need to do. Right. No, you. This is something that you yeah. really need mm -hmm. to do. So, you know, I think uh, there was it wasn't that I dictated to them everything. Yeah, or that they did not ever kick against the goad if you yeah, will sure or or say dad you're being smothering or oppressive right or, i don't think that this is right i think i should be able to drink yeah you know no you can't yeah. well my friends all do yeah you, you can't right you know right. and here's why right and you tell them all the right you know the different issues right um so my kids were little sinners that needed to be sanctified sure. and thankfully they trusted christ and professed christ and all along, I had the the the, uh, the 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 help of God's Spirit. Yeah. In the entire yeah. time, of course, much of that it was because of the intercession that my wife provided. Sure. I was more of the the instruction. This mm -hmm. is what you do. Proactive. Mm -hmm. And she was more on my knees, praying, mm -hmm. asking God for wisdom. Yeah. Praying for the souls of my kids. Yeah. This yeah. is not to suggest I never prayed. Right. And this is not to suggest that right. she did not get hands on. Right. Because we both did both. Yeah. But, you know, it was an occasion where uh, my children just erupted in, mm -hmm. just shortly after we moved here, yeah. in a uh, seething uh, hostility against God, really mm -hmm. saying blasphemous things about mm -hmm. they hate him because he did this to them and mm -hmm. brought them here and took them away from their friends right. and so on and so forth. Right. And it was just, uh, it was just like, whoa. 
And my wife was so grieved by what they were saying, so hurt by what mm -hmm. they were saying on behalf of the Lord. Yeah. That she says, I can't take this. So, excuse me, I'm going to go pray. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure, <laughs> sure. You get the good job. As, mean, you're you know, looking, as you're looking for yeah. your wooden paddle. No, I didn't. Ready to go you to know, they were high school yeah. kids. So yeah. I was more counselor at that point. Right. So, you know, I, 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 had, I spent about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. discipling them, confronting yeah. them, instructing them, correcting them, giving them freedom to express themselves, even in ways that I thought were horrible. Mm. And yet, giving them the freedom to express yeah. themselves, they would express themselves, and I would meet it. I'd meet their expression mm. with what I would consider to be uh, divinely provided wisdom mm. from God's Word yeah. about why this, what they're saying is inc incorrect, right. and this is how they should look at it. Right. And all three of them, softened mm. and became pliable and malleable and I was able to fashion them all together into an, appro a pre an appropriate perspective and help them take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ and pull down the strongholds that mm. had been erected in their souls yeah. that were indicting God mm. and you know uh, sending salvos against God over their yeah. wall yeah. and I was able to do all that but I would have to say that my wife uh, was upstairs yeah. in prayer the entire hour and a half mm -hmm. yeah. for those kids. Yeah. So mm -hmm. which of us really is responsible yeah. for turning that situation around? Right. Was it my wife or was it my counsel? Right. Well, it was us. Yeah, it was for prayer sure. was critical yeah, for sure. and my engagement was critical. For sure. And yeah. so we, we knew our, our share of challenges and yeah. um it, you know, I, I would not want anybody to think that we just sailed through life, happy go lucky, with yeah. ever, never yeah, care, yeah, yeah. And our kids were perfect. Yeah. No, yeah. nor were we the perfect parents. Nor, right. did, you know, I, I would be harsh or I'd get angry and, and the kids would, you know, bear the brunt of that. My mm -hmm. wife would mm -hmm. be grieved because that wounded her when she saw me harsh with the kids. And sure. Behind the closed yeah. doors, she would say, you were really harsh. Mm -hmm. And I said, I didn't think I was harsh. Yeah. And she goes, no, you really were harsh. And mm -hmm. so I would have to go back to the kids and say, hey, was right. I harsh with y'all? Right. And if they said, yeah, Dad, you really were, and I would seek forgiveness. And I'm so yeah. sorry. I didn't mean to be. Yeah. Um, but, you know, being transparent and so on is important. Mm -hmm. And genuinely loving them is the point. Nobody's perfect. There are no such thing as perfect parents. No such thing as perfect kids. They're sinful and we're sinful. Yeah. Uh, we have the benefit of the spirit of God's direction, which is yeah. helpful. But I think it's important that, you know, we, we recognize how necessary it is to set that example. So, you know, I, I think one of the things that is important is that we understand the phases of parenting. The next issue I think that is important is that we understand the priority of setting a proper pattern mm -hmm. for our children. Mm -hmm. Be an example to your children yeah, of sure. what you desire for them to be. Sure. Right? Don't mm -hmm. call them to a standard that you're not willing to fulfill. Right. You know, you, know you, you, you get into a situation where your children are hostile toward one another mm -hmm. or toward you. So what do you do? You evidence hostility mm -hmm. back to them. Mm -hmm. No. You, you, you can't fight hostility with hostility. Right. You can't do that. Right. Um, you have to demonstrate compassion and tenderness, yet firmness and, mm -hmm. you know, accountability, clearly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you never were, should um, utilize chastisement or consequences, corporal um, chastisement or consequences that translates into spanking. Right. Right. In an angry way or right. in a way that leaves uh, any kind of a... Um, um, a lasting mark on right. our children, right. you know, obviously their, their skin may turn red, right. but if you're leaving welts or yeah. if you're leaving bruises yeah, or sure. cuts, clearly you are out of line. Yeah. Right? That's not what God would have us do. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I remember one time I spanked my little son, my firstborn son, and I bruised his bottom. I called my dad. Yeah. I said, dad. And I'm crying. Yeah. I said, Dad, I'm an abuser. I'm an I'm abuser. And he goes, what happened? I told him. And he said, were you angry? I said, no, no, I wasn't angry. He says, you're not an abuser. Yeah. You're a beginner. Mm. You're learning. Yeah. And so comfort yourself with the fact that you've learned something. Yeah. And don't repeat that mistake. Yeah. You know, mm. just 
realized that it was too hard or too many right. or whatever it right. was that I needed to re re learn. You're not an abuser. Right. You're a beginner. Right. And that really comforted my yeah. heart. Well, yeah. Rich, I hope this comforts you as well. Yes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Wherever you are out there, right. be comforted. <laughs> but well, that's that, helpful. But that yeah. example, being that example right. is so right. important. Yep. You know, it, totally. it really is. And, totally. and you know, there, there are all kinds of scriptures that talk about you know, let your light so shine before men, and and, yeah. and you know, obviously your children would be such Absolutely. that they may see your good works right. and glorify your Father in heaven. So set right. the example of who you ought to be, so that they glorify Christ for you. Right, right, right. Um, you know, challenging them to imitate me, uh, even as I imitate Christ. And yeah, other yeah, that's good. other verses, you know, that help with that. And then the third thing uh, to wrap up would be, you know, realizing also the price of provocations. Hmm. The price of provocations. So I've double alliterated all these for you. No, I don't. But the... the, the fully affirm what you're doing. Yeah. So, you know, if you provoke your children to wrath yeah. or exasperate your children, yeah. there are varieties of ways you can do that. Um, one is expecting them to be something you're not willing to be. That's yeah. that's the biggest thing sure. right off the, the bat. hypocrisy. Right. Yeah. Hypocrisy. That's right. awful. Um, communicating to your children that they're a bother to you. Hmm. Um, don't ever communicate to your children that that you wish you'd never had them right. or life would be so much better without them right. or you make life so difficult on me uh, or you're a bother, you know, that yeah. kind of a thing yeah. um, is devastating to your effectiveness as a parent. Yeah. You, can't, you can't do that. You can't communicate that they're a bother. Um, you know, you can't treat your children differently than you treat other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't ever spank other people, so somebody's going to say, well, wait, I thought, you know. And as, an, as an employee of yours. Well, you're grateful. I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful. But the point is, I'm talking about temperamentally, respectfully, right. Right. so on. You have, obviously, duties that you have to do with your children that you don't do with anybody else. Sure. But, you know, it's the hypocrisy, again, right. that right. that you you may be screaming at your kid, and then you right. answer the phone, hello, and right. how pleasant. And, right. You would never scream at your boss that no, way. Or your, no. you know, or right. friend or somebody, or yeah. somebody else. Right. Um, and the children see the way you treat mm -hmm. them versus yeah. the way you treat your friends or mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. And if there's a huge disparity between mm -hmm. those things, yeah. th that shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, they should be respected and treated uh, with as much respect yeah. as you do anybody else. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's it's devastating to your children for you to, to fail to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, not... You can't find fault in everything they do. Hmm. That exasperates them. Yeah. You know, there's nothing you can praise. And you never positively enforce anything. You're only just criticizing mm -hmm. what they do. Mm -hmm. That's devastating. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're not going to love you mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you do that. Yeah. Uh, they won't even like you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This doesn't mean you shouldn't criticize them because you should. When right. they're errant, you should criticize them. Right. But you should also take note of the things they do well and yeah. commend them for yeah. it and reinforce those things. Yeah. Um, you know, failing to listen to them, where that you're only interested in them listening to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to be willing to listen to them. Listen, yeah. be a good yeah. listener. Have as an aspiration that by the time your children leave your home, they're saying, "You know what, Dad and Mom listened mm -hmm. to me." Yeah. You know, sometimes I didn't know what I was trying to say. Right. But they were listening. Yeah. And yeah. help me clarify it, or yeah. they listened That's well true. enough to get. To help me frame it properly right. so that I understood that what I was even thinking because I didn't even know what I was thinking. Right. Um, but listen carefully and and no, don't just think of the next thing you're going to slam them with mm. when they're talking. Yeah. Listen to them. Yeah. Don't indulge them. Just give in to whatever they want. Mm. That's a disaster. Mm -hmm. You know. Don't indulge them either. Yeah. yeah. So listen to you know. Mm. Don't fail to listen to them. Don't indulge them. Um, you know. Demand too much from them, um, you know. Make the bar so high they can't reach it. Right. Um, don't do that. Don't compare them to other kids. You mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. I wish you were like Johnny over there. Johnny respects right. his parents. Right. Why can't you be more like Johnny? Right. Like it's always you know, Johnny. Like yeah. Johnny. I don't know. No one likes Johnny. I know. No one likes know. Johnny. Yeah. And keep your promises. Yeah. To your children. Those are some things. I think. Yeah. You know, as teenagers, all those are so important. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the, you know, the as I began, I said one of the foremost mistakes is just obsessing over when my my children like me. Don't yeah. don't concern yourself with whether they like you. Yeah. Just you concern yourself with whether you're loving them. Mm. That's the first thing. Yeah. Second thing is move through these phases. Right. 
deliberately, right. intentionally, right. and don't linger on a phase mm -hmm. more than you should. Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. Yeah. But don't go there too quickly. Right. So really right. depend upon the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom in that. Yeah. Those ages of 5, uh, 12, 18, 20, yeah. somewhere in there are benchmarks. Yeah. You know, but they're yeah. not absolutes. Right. Right. Um, and then really, really concern yourself with being uh, the pattern for who you, yeah. who and what you want them to be. Yeah. And then yeah. don't provoke them. Yeah. You know, by these errors that I mentioned. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really helpful. That's really great. Um, there's just a lot of good stuff in there. And, I, you know, one, one thing that I, I hear you saying repeatedly is you, have, you just have to rely on the Lord. Absolutely. Right. It's, yeah. it's prayer. It's, you know, I, I even think about those moments where you're, you know, the temptation is to respond in kind. They're, they're being frustrating. Therefore, you're going to react. And you just need the Spirit's help in those moments to, to respond in a way that communicates that love. And so. I didn't always do it well. Right. Um, yeah. My kids, it was funny. One of my children came and said, Dad, you never lost your temper with us. Mm. You were always kind. Of yeah. Work. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay. That's how you never <laughs> I'm not going to mess that up. You know? <laughs> and I looked over Pat and went, Don't ruin it. Yeah. Don't ruin it. It's it. 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 a great moment. Yeah. I love it. No. No, that's really helpful. We have, we have a ton of parents in our church and a lot of new parents in our church. And so I'm grateful for that wisdom. And we anticipate the book as well. Yeah. So, And I'll give a plug for the equipping hour. John Cassidy, yeah. John and yeah. Sharon, and yep. Pat and me. Yep. Sorry, check that. Pat and I. John and Sharon, Pat and I will yep. be leading a um, yeah. parenting um, class in January. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for I'll you. I'll be participating via um, video because... Yeah. you got other places to be signed. We're going to be preaching at the yeah. same time. The pulpit. Yeah. Yeah. So Pat will probably be there and John share. Yeah, no, that'll be helpful. Yep. Well, there you go. There's a plug, something to look forward to. And uh, as always, you know, Pastor Rick is always at your disposal. I would, I offer Absolutely. myself as well, but just know that I have two children. They're very young and I have no experience. So, which is why I ask these questions. <laughs> but you know the own. word. That's but I do know the word. And you so know the word. You know, by God's grace, we'll, we'll, we'll right. figure you it out. So, Pastor Rick, thanks for serving us so well. You bet. Church, we love you. We'll see you next time in another episode of Living by the Book. Take care.